The Chevy Corvette has one of the longest and most dynamic histories of any vehicle ever made. From the original narrow-bodied C1 Corvette to the mid-engine modern 8000 RPM Z06, the Corvette has seen many shapes and many forms. But of all the eight generations of Corvettes that we've seen over the last 70 years, there is one Corvette in specific that has achieved almost mythical status. It is the holy grail of Corvettes. This is the car that makes $200,000 resto mod Corvette owners envious. And it was one of the fastest production cars in the world when it was originally built. That car was the 1967 L88 Corvette. Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Rare Cars. This is the channel where we dive into the past and explore some of the rarest and most iconic vehicles of all time. If you want to see more short-form documentaries on unique cars like the Aston Martin Vantage V600 or the Gambala Avalanche and others, then make sure to subscribe to the Rare Cars YouTube channel as we will be releasing new documentaries every single week. But let's dive into the wild history and the crazy specs of the infamous L88 Corvette. Now, to understand what made the L88 Corvette so special, we need to understand the Corvette in which it was based upon. The C2 generation of Corvettes were built from 1963 to 1967. The C2 was a major step in the development of the Corvette. The C2 Corvette was designed from the beginning to utilize a V8 engine. The C2 Corvette was wide, low, and particularly sharky looking if you took the bumpers off. They had independent rear suspension and could actually handle pretty well. These were sports cars, not muscle cars. Early models featured Chevy's potent 327 cubic inch small block, which in top trim could make over 360 horsepower. Later down the production run, Chevrolet began to offer the big block 396 and even the 427 cubic inch big block motors in the Corvettes. Now these engine offerings bumped the horsepower up to well over 400 horsepower to around the 420-430 mark, which is a considerable amount more than the 360 to 365 horsepower available with the top trim 327 small block. These big block Corvettes were seriously fast. There's just no denying it. We're talking in the 12 second quarter mile times for a regular 427 big block bet. Now the L88s did use a 427 big block. However, these engines were much more radical. While the regular 427 powered C2 Corvettes were pretty rowdy street machines by themselves, the L88 cars were on a whole nother level. Now first was the L88's 427 cubic inch big block. Now General Motors said that this 427 made 430 horsepower from the factory. Turns out, uh, GM was about as truthful as a cheating housewife caught in the act when sharing these performance numbers. Actual dyno results puts the real power output of the L88 cars somewhere around 560 horsepower. Now it's rumored that besides for just insurance reasons, that GM underrated these cars so heavily was that so normal customers wouldn't buy these when compared to another 427 Corvette. The idea was that on paper, if they all made about the same horsepower, but the other ones had way more options on them and were much cheaper, regular customers would end up buying the regular 427 Corvettes. And only the people that really knew what the L88 Corvettes were would end up buying the L88 package. GM only wanted the L88 cars in the hands of people who were going to use every ounce of power that it had. These engines were truly savage, and it's amazing that they were even offered in a road car at all. To start, you were supposed to run 103 octane gas in your L88 car. Let that sink in. The motors had 12 and a half to one compression, forged rods, forged pistons, hardened push rods, a high lift cam that to be honest, just was not very streetable, an 850 CFM four barrel carb, and even factory aluminum heads were just some of the goodies that were part of the L88 package. But the L88 wasn't just a big motor strapped to a Corvette. No, everything when it comes to the L88 Corvette was meant for performance. This was a racetrack brawler. No extra fan shrouds like other road cars had, no choke to improve streetability. The L88 cars figuratively had one speed, and that speed was go. Speaking of gears, the L88 cars also came standard with the M22 Rock Crusher four-speed transmission. These cars needed a robust gearbox to handle all the torque, and the M22 Rock Crusher was basically the only option. Now, the one thing about the M22 Rock Crusher, if you're not familiar, is that it has straighter cut gears than other similar manual transmissions of the time, which gave the M22 Rock Crusher a very loud and distinct whine. It sounds a lot like modern race car transmissions. The power was put down to the rear pavement to a positive traction rear end with drag focus 456 rear gears. Creature comforts were not even in the question for L88 owners. No heat, no air conditioning, no radio, nothing. These cars were built to run and no unnecessary weight was going to hold them down at the track. 
On the exterior, the C2 L88s were not all that different from the regular big block Corvettes in 1967. Now, the later C3 generation of Corvettes actually had an L88 option as well, and those saw some small exterior changes, like their now famous L88 hood. But mechanically, they stayed relatively the same in the powertrain as the C2 L88 Corvettes did. Now, Chevy built the L88 Corvettes from 1967 until 1969. In total, they built around 216 of them. But 1967 was the last model year of the C2 Corvette. See, the L88 package was offered in the C2 and the C3 body style. But the C2 L88 cars are the holy grail for Corvette collectors because they are so rare. Of the 216 total L88 cars ever made, only 20 of those were in the 1967 model year in the C2 body style. And of those 20, only around 10 of them are still known to exist today. See, the problem with the L88 that caused it to be a relatively slow seller is also what made it so great. It was a purpose-built racer. It was not a street-friendly car in particular. It was a car meant for the track that could be driven on the street, not the other way around. The L88 Corvette was also ludicrously expensive at the time. In the mid to late 1960s, people weren't spending the crazy money on rare track-focused cars like they are now. The MSRP of an L88 Corvette was a hair over $6,000. And when compared to a base Corvette that was a far better street car and far better equipped car at just $4,000, it's clear to see that only performance junkies with deep pockets could actually afford their own L88 Corvette. Now the C3 L88 Corvettes, of which there are about 180 of, saw much more widespread use and recognition. They even ran C3 L88 Corvettes at Le Mans in the Bonneville Salt Flats. The C3 L88s have a much more documented history of racing and actually being used at that pedigree. Now fast forward to today, the 1967 L88 Corvettes in specific, the C2 ones, are one of the most valuable American cars ever made. To put it in perspective, at the last auction of one, the 1967 L88 Corvette sold for about $2.65 million. C3 L88 cars sell in the four dollars to $600,000 range for reference. So if you ever end up seeing a real L88 Corvette, specifically a C2 one, and you better get a picture with it because there really are not that many out there. But that is the abridged history of the L88 Corvette. If you enjoyed this video, we would greatly appreciate it if you could drop a like and also share this video with other enthusiasts. Also, please make sure you are subscribed to the Rare Cars YouTube channel and smash the notification bell for more documentary-style videos just like this on the world's most interesting cars. Until next time, enthusiasts.